There's a lot of little small things that people have been asking me about, like how to grind experience when you get to higher levels, how to get certain achievements, how to get the 4th and 5th skill trees for all your characters, and of course, what things to do before beginning New Game Plus. I figure all this stuff can basically be included in one video here if you're looking to maximize your time efficiency and planning to do New Game Plus for the bonuses it provides. If you're not, a lot of things in this video should still help out, so I hope this video still proves to be useful to you. As per usual with these later game content videos, there are spoilers on the 7th party member in this video, so please watch at your own risk. And if you enjoy my content, please be sure to subscribe and look forward to my future guides and content on this game and other games in the series. So one of the most common questions I've gotten is if I can make an experience grinding guide for later levels. Now I was able to hit 99 pretty naturally just doing everything else in the game, and even have a ton of bonus experience that can't even be used, but if you're looking for how to just power level to 99 fast, then here are some methods that you might be able to use to maximize your experience gain. The first thing you can do is link Ricky's skills to get more experience at day or night. Day should be easy to max out, and night is on an unlockable skill chart that I'll go over later. You can also link the ability to get full experience even if not in the battle for all of your party members so everyone's getting the same amount of experience at all times. You can also link Fiora's acceleration skill which increases experience awarded by 20%. Every little bit can help maximize your time efficiency. Now one thing you can do is obviously use experience up gems when fighting. Now the only ones you can craft come from a level 96 nebula enemy and shouldn't really be useful at that point, so all the others can be gotten from quests and the collectopedia. Let me go over those now. So the experience up gems that give the most meaningful bonuses that help out a lot are doing Colony 6 Reconstruction up to level 2 which is a level 3 gem, Colony 6 Reconstruction Nature level 5 which gives a level 4 gem, the Collectopedia Other category, if you complete the Parts category, you will get a level 5 experience up gem. There is a treasure chest in Prison Island in the Central Hall that gives a level up 5 gem. And if you do the quest to Bonnet the Betrayer, which is behind a very large side quest chain, you will get a level 6 experience up gem. These gems will all stack up to 200% per character. And if you want to just power level one character to get them up to the max as fast as possible to make it easier to level up the other characters, then that is a viable option for you. As far as actual combat, the secret to getting levels the fastest way is really just finding the largest cluster of enemies about 3 to 5 levels higher than you and trying to kill them all in an area of effect chain attack. Dor Dunban's Soaring Tempest is probably the strongest art for accomplishing this task. If you fight some more powerful enemies that may not go down as quick, just make sure you have all the strongest skill links ready for increasing chain link chance as much as you possibly can. As you might expect, Shulk, Ryan, and Dunban are the best party for this. Some unique monsters around this level like Indomitable Dalton will also help a lot too. Once you get to about mid 80s you can find all your other leveling needs in Tefra Cave, especially thanks to expert mode existing now. The absolute best spot if you have agility and night vision and you can make sure you can hit all these enemies is once again going to be the arachno feeding layer that I showed off in my AP grinding guide. Because I really did just cap out on bonus experience and experience in general just from doing this over and over and over again. You can level yourself down to about level 90 if you need to, and keep fighting them over and over, and you'll eventually be able to level yourself up to 99 with absolutely no issues whatsoever. The only real strategy you have to do here is just run around the room twice to um, aggro all 14 enemies. And from there, once you get the party meter, you're able to successfully chain attack and pretty much just go ham on them. The idea is to kill at least three enemies with Dunban Soaring Tempest in the third slot, and then you'll be able to chain attack again right afterwards because you get a full bar of party meter every time you kill an enemy in a chain attack. You can see from D Ryan's Lariat there, I pretty much already got my party meter back. And this allows you to just continuously spam chain attacks over and over, and as you might know, you get more experience if you kill enemies in a chain attack, and if they are higher level than you. So by maximizing all these things together, then you can get a lot of experience very quickly. I already gained all the way from 88 to 89 here, and I'm not even finished fighting all the enemies in this room yet. And this is very repeatable. It may not be the absolute fastest method ever, but it's very, very repeatable and it's very, very easy to get capped out on experience by doing this. I went from about three-fourths of the way through level 88 to about halfway through level 89, as you can see here, and I think once I do this one more time, I hit level 90. So this is a really good room to grind experience in. If you're a little lower level than this, you might want to fight some of the lizards or bunnets that are levels high 80s to low 90s. But otherwise, this is a really, really section to just basically grind all the way to level 99, even if they're not the absolute max level enemies. And if you want to get experience from fighting some more unique monsters or anything like that, right at the Heavenly Window you have some pretty high level Gogols and two really high level unique monsters you can fight. And you can also fight super bosses for levels if you absolutely want to do that later on. 
Three Sage Summit has level 99 Slavos you can fight at nighttime if you want to fight them as well. But overall, I find this method to be the absolute fastest, especially because it helps you grind some achievements that can be very, very annoying to get if you plan on getting all the achievements in this game for 100%. One thing this lets you do is grind chain attacks pretty easily. There is one achievement in this game that you need to do a thousand chain attacks to get, and it also helps increase the number of total enemies you kill if you want to grind the 5,000 enemies achievement. Just because there's so many of them, of course. Now, the two most annoying achievements to me were actually get 2,000 Burst Affinity and Happy New Year. All the others can be accomplished in a decent amount of time by using this method, but the 2,000 Burst Affinity is going to take a different method without chain attacking. I'd recommend replacing Ryan with Fiora and focusing a lot on critical hit rate to get as much Burst Affinity procs as possible, but you can still do that fight since there's a lot of enemies you can hit at the same time with something like Heat Haze, Soaring Tempest to get a lot of critical hits and just keep trying to get as much as you possibly can. For Happy New Year, you're going to need to see the sun rise on the 366th day. This is a time-based achievement. The quickest way to do this is by changing your clock to 11 p.m. and letting it pass through midnight so the day changes, and then change the clock to 4 a.m. and then let it pass by 5 a.m. If you try to go backwards or just keep passing midnight, it'll just keep subtracting a day and not actually count the full day. You have to do it this way. It has to pass midnight and then it has to pass 5 a.m. You can't just change the clock to midnight and then to 5 a.m. because that doesn't work. So for every single cycle, it takes at least two minutes to do this. I'd recommend doing this while you're doing other things like fighting these enemies. That's how I was able to get it decently fast. Regardless, it's still one of the most annoying challenges in the game. Another really annoying challenge might be revived and capacitated party members 500 times, especially if you're later on in the game and don't really have a great way to let your allies die. The way I did this was by leveling Shulk and Ryan down to level 1 and have Dunban at level 99. I found an enemy Dunban could easily get party meter off of and let my allies die over and over to the AoE attacks of that enemy. I think I used the Lakelet Mammoth from uh, Magna Forest. It didn't really take all that long and you can also grind Affinity that way if you really want to do that. As far as Trials, Trials will reset when you go into New Game Plus. Records do not. So if you want to file with all the records and Trials done, you have to do all the records on the fi file that you've done all the Trials on. Now, some of these, like Roots Across the World, can be annoying. You need to do all the quests in the game, basically, to get this and still talk to people after that. Make sure you're talking to every named NPC you see, because it'll also just unlock a bunch of quests in general that you might want to do. If you are looking to have a completed save file with all records and trials done, and do not want to do New Game Plus, you will have to grind the records the way I did, otherwise you might just keep going into New Game Plus and be able to get them a little bit easier that way. Colony 6, of course, used to be really difficult, but it's a little bit easier in this game thanks to challenge mode and time attack letting you buy all the items. Speaking of which, that might be a good thing to do if you do plan to do New Game Plus and don't want to go through all the effort of grinding Colony 9 again. Something you can do is buy all of the Colony 9 items before starting New Game Plus. So you won't have to hunt down ice cabbages, you won't have to hunt down black liver beans, you won't have to go kill enemies that are hard to kill again or annoying to find, that have low drop rates for all their items. You can just buy everything right here. It sells every single Colony 6 item to my knowledge. And as far as I'm aware, it will all carry over. So if you want to just instantly get Colony 9 to level 5 or Colony 6 to level 5, then you can just do that as soon as you get there if you just buy everything. Once again, the best challenge for grinding this is Lost in a Dark Dream. I already kind of have a Nopon Stone farming guide if you want to know how to do that really quickly. So now let's get on to the skill trees. I've had a lot of questions about this, people wondering how they get the extra skill trees, and all of them are going to be quest tied. This means you have to do a bunch of side quests in the game to get access to them. They'll have area affinity requirements, and they'll have some other requirements besides that, and they're normally locked behind some quest chains. Let's get into how to get all of them now. So the thing to remember about many quests is that you need to talk to every named NPC you can to make sure you're getting extra area affinity and unlocking as many quests as possible. So make sure you're doing that, and with that in mind, let's talk about Shulk's skill trees. Shulk's fourth skill tree, Pessimism, can be unlocked by completing the quest, Desiree's Future, obtained from Desiree. She will be walking around the commercial district at night. You will need to do her first quest and talk to her a few more times after this to have access to it, as well as doing the side quest Jackson's Awakening as a prerequisite. You will also need four and a half stars of affinity with the Colony 9 area before the quest becomes available. Once all of these requirements are met, you can obtain the quest. Once you complete it, you will get the skill tree. Shulk's fifth skill tree, Bravery, can be obtained at the end of the Emmy Leader side quest chain. Emmy Leader is a woman in the military district of Colony 9 who will give you a series of quests. Complete them all and she will disappear from town. 
After the events of Mechanis Corps, you can talk to Miller in the Military District to get the final quest. Either a Young Captain's Trust, or a Young Captain's Revival depending on the decision you made in their previous quest, but the result will be the same if you complete this quest, you will get the skill tree. To get Ryan's fourth skill tree, you will need to develop Colony 6 and invite the following people to the town. Hoko, Pokapoka, Makrish, and Talonith. Once all of them are in Colony 6, you can start a side quest chain involving a cook-off by talking to Hoko. Finish all four quests in the chain to unlock the Inpatient skill tree. To get Ryan's fifth skill tree, you will once again need to be past the events of Makana's Core. You will also need to kill enemies over level 90, so make sure you are prepared for that. You will need to complete a few quests involving these children to get them to all play together, and then you can receive a quest called Friendship Tokens. Do this quest to get camaraderie. To get Charla's fourth skill tree, Reliance, you will need to have four stars of affinity with Central Bionis. And you will also need to complete the side quest, Disinsectation, as a prerequisite obtained from Rasha, who will also give you this quest. Complete the quest, Avenging Amon Upon's Death, to obtain this skill. Charla's fifth skill tree will require developing Colony 6 nearly to the max, so you can invite Don Argentis, one of his two daughters, and their specific love interest, Pepino or Orlexi. You must complete the side quest, Family Secrets, and Betrothal Test to unlock this quest. You will need four stars of affinity to get the final quest, stopping the elopement. Complete this quest from Don Argentum to get Charla's fifth skill tree, Affection. Dunban's fourth skill tree, Obstinance, can be obtained from Valak Mountain. At the Nopon Outpost, you will get some quest about the Chilkin and Antal in the area. Complete both of these to get Balance of Power. To complete this quest, you will need to defeat both unique monsters that can be found in the Antal Den above the Nopon Camp. Just time a jump from the slide and you're there. The second Shilkin UM will be in one of the pods, so just keep that in mind. Dunvan's fifth skill tree, Enthusiasm, can be obtained after Makana's Core if you have four stars of affinity with Hidden Village. Speak to Orchatrix after fulfilling these requirements for the quest Stunted Growth. Once you finish the quest, you will have the skill tree. Melia's skill trees are some of the easiest in the game to get. For her fourth, Reticence, you will need to complete a side quest chain at the Lighthouse in Erisee involving some Hodes. Continue to complete them and you will eventually get a quest called Trouble at the Lighthouse. Finish this quest and you'll get the skill tree. Melia's fifth skill tree, Passion, requires doing either Talia's research before Makana's core or investigating Satoral afterwards. You also need to complete Imperial Ceremony given by Scarlin and Satoral Marsh after Makana's core to get the High Antia Emblem. This requires killing a level 86 enemy, so be prepared. Once that is done, find Talia at the Aether Plant in Erisee and get the quest Ancient High Entia Mystery. Finish this quest to get the skill tree. Me. Ricky's fourth skill tree requires a long chain of quests in Frontier Village to be completed. You must do medical advancements or let's make fillings from one of the two doctors. <laughs> Healing the healer afterwards, Napon Legendary Napon Charm after that, and mislabeling problem after that. Once all of these quests are done, you can get the quest Getting Bigger in order to get the Cowardice skill tree. Ricky's fifth tree, Heroism, requires doing side quests related to the Napon Sage. You can obtain the first from these one of these Napon children at the bottom of the village. These quests are Honoring the Napon Sage, Meeting the Napon Sage, Legend of the Sage, and Challenge of the Sage. After Makana's core, talk to the Sage for the final challenge of the Sage quest. You must defeat a level 96 unique monster for the skill tree, so be very prepared before trying to get it. And finally, Fiora's skill trees. Rashness can be obtained by doing some side quests on the Fallen Arm. You will need to do Fixing a Broken Door and the Wilted Flower from Rikaza. Afterwards, a quest called the Oath Sword will open up shortly afterward if you talk to this guy. Complete it for the skill tree. For Fiora's final skill tree, Innocence, you will have to defeat two level 98 unique monsters, and one of them is a complete jerk that has a day's counter spike. Be very prepared before doing this quest. You will need to do some side quests in the Tomb of Befalger after Makana's core from Shura, who will be here if you haven't done them already. Afterwards, you need to do some side quests from Doland, who will be near Junks at Colony 6. After doing his first quest, he'll go to the refugee camp. Find him there for the last two quests and finish the quest battling brutes for the final and hardest skill tree to obtain in the game. That should about cover all the quests, so let's talk about some final preparations you might want to make before doing New Game Plus, or just some other things you may want to get. Naturally, you're going to want to get all the best weapons and gems that you can before starting New Game Plus. I already have a gem guide that includes locations for the best gems in the game, so let's go over the other weapons for each character again.
So, of course, if you're doing New Game Plus, you will automatically get the Monado 3, which is absolutely going to be Shulk's best weapon ever. But if you want all the replicas for fashion gear or just for the sake of collecting them all, then you can easily do that by doing all five of the quests that you are given, and you will be able to easily track all the monsters to get the items that you will need for those quests. As far as other weapons, the best weapon for Ryan is Atomic Driver, the best weapon for Dunban is Wyvern Cutlass, and the best weapon for Fiora is Dystopia. So why am I grouping all three of these together? Well, interestingly enough, this enemy, Deadly Medorlo, will drop all three of those weapons, and if you don't get one, you can easily reload and try to open the treasure chest again, and then just keep fighting him to get the others. He has a 7.2% chance of dropping the Atomic Driver, he has a 6.2% chance of dropping Wyvern Cutlass, and he has a 4.2% chance of dropping Conviction Blades. This is probably the best odds to get a lot of these weapons, especially the Atomic Driver, just because... Most of the other enemies that drop it don't drop gold chests that often since they're normal enemies and the unique monsters are guaranteed to drop them. So I definitely recommend just farming off this enemy and trying to get whatever you can from it. Charla's best weapon is the Endless Rifle. In order to get a 3 slot version of this, the easiest way is going to be fighting Masterful Gigapore, a unique monster that you can find on the Traval which very very close to the point of no return. Ricky's best weapon is of course the Monopon. Okay, no, just kidding. It's actually the Meteor Nibbler. In order to get a 3 slot version of this, I recommend skip traveling to the Radio Carpa Coast and going up the Digit 1 arm to fight the unique monster, the spider unique monster, the Palifer Eligos. Melia's best weapon is the Meteor Staff, or at least her best offensive weapon at the very least. The easiest way to obtain this the most efficiently is by fighting the unique monster on the north of the anti-air bar battery 2 shore here, the Flailing Breakin. It is a flammy type enemy, and it's going to be surrounded by some other flammy type enemies, and you can find it on this little beach over here. You can jump off a ledge and swim over there. Unfortunately, there's no landmark anywhere near it, but it's not that hard to get to, so just save and reload until you get it out of the treasure chest. As far as anything else to mention, fashion gear will carry over, and as long as you've had it in your inventory once, it'll automatically count as fashion gear. So this means if you save before buying an item that counts as fashion gear, and then reload the game after buying it but before saving again, then you will have that item in your fashion gear inventory without having to waste the money to actually buy the item. This also works for Nopon Stones and Challenge Mode, and it's a great way to fill out your fashion gear slots if you're trying to get all of them. The last thing that I can think of that you'll want to do so you don't have to redo a bunch of things to get again on New Game Plus files are getting the two hidden Monado arts, Monado Eater and Monado Armor. Armor is one of the best arts in the entire game, so I absolutely recommend picking it up as soon as possible. Fortunately, Monado Armor is actually really easy to get. All you need to do is get one and a half stars with the Hidden Village, which is super easy to do, and then do two side quests from Elika here at the entrance of the Hidden Village. Once you complete the quest, stop the mech on Rampage, you will automatically learn the art. For Monado Eater, you'll need to do a side quest chain beginning with Mystery of the Magna Ruins 1 and ending with Mystery of the Magna Ruins 4. All four side quests can be obtained from Lupa. You will need three stars with Central Bionis to complete this side quest chain. Upon completion of the quest, skip travel to King Agni's tomb and open the treasure chest to get Monado Eater. With that and the skill trees, you will have unlocked every gameplay bonus locked by quests and won't need to do a bunch of quests again if you don't want to. If there's anything else you may be wondering about that's a little small thing, I'll be happy to answer in the comments, but otherwise I think that about covers all the major important things I would do before doing New Game Plus. If you enjoyed this video and want to see more content on the series, be sure to like, comment, subscribe, follow me on Twitter, Twitch, and anything else that you can to support me if you want to. I greatly appreciate all of it, and hope this video was useful to you all. With all that said, thank you all so much for watching, and have a wonderful day.